verse uh here. Get Revelation 18 and 1, man. Can't talk to black woman, bro. <laughs> I just I see I saw her looking when we were talking. Shalom, Shalom, let's get up, in our face, honor and glory. We start off with giving our praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, 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 by and we out here another week to do what? To prophesy the truth into our people. We out here another week to uh, and get a uh, scripture as well. Uh, scripture as well. Uh, we out here to prophesy to our people the truth of the Bible. Okay, because this Bible, this book was written for the elect of Israel. Okay, and the Bible contains history, prophecy, okay, law, such as the commandment, wisdom. For you to live on this earth while you're here in the sight of your Bashiach Shah. And if you're not living according to the scriptures, then you're off. Okay? In this whole world that we're currently in, the system that we're currently in, the system of the Edomite, okay, the so-called white people, the Edomites, the Bible that's that the Bible speaks of, the devil, okay, those that go back to you, the Edomites, they're not just the so-called white people you got. The Edomites that look like Negroes, not to those native Americans. You got Edomites that look like Arabs, Chinese, Japanese. And this man has spread his seed too. Okay, we're here to tell you who you are according to the Bible. What your nationality is, what your judgment is according to the Bible. As well as to tell our people, the one third as well as the two thirds, what the judgment will be according to the word of the Haobashim Haobashim. And all you brothers out there you tuning in, all you select Aqua that are tuning in, your first goal, if you're not out here preaching and prophesying as a man, Israel, then what you should be doing is studying and understanding the scriptures, man. And you saw, uh, if your brother was watching the Apostle live stream yesterday, or the live stream preaching yesterday, and you see the most the, the spirit of Yahweh Shalom Shai jump on the apostles, and they were they were rebuking and admonishing, man. If you take your brothers out there, man, don't just be a Bible holder, man, or a sign holder, man. While you holding them signs up and while you grabbing scriptures, you should be reading these scriptures at home. Hey, this word should be in you, man. That's what the word educate means. To take something that's already in you. And do not the Lord say, this word, this word is in you, man. They bring that up. 
2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy 2, 15. Study to show thyself approved unto the Most High, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yeah, so study to show yourself approved, man. How you going to be approved if, you don't, if you're not studying the scriptures, man? How you going to be approved? How, how can you answer a question? The scripture says be at the teach, right? How can you be at the teach if you're not studying, man? And, and we don't have to have, constantly have tests to see if you're studying. We can just ask questions. And if you can't answer these most general questions, you know, it, that shows that you're not doing your job, man. And your job as a man of the Lord is not just to come out here, cuss out Esau, cuss out two thirds, hold signs, eat chicken and, and drink, man. That's not it, man. Your job as a, as a, as a, as a man of the Lord is to study, show yourself a fruit, man. To rightfully divide. And you saw what happened a week or two ago, that one brother, he he wasn't rightfully dividing the scriptures, and it showed, man, in his lesson. He might have thought, oh, I did a good lesson, man. But the whole time you were going off, man. And we we as leaders of the, of the camp, we don't have all the time to sit down and watch every video, post our videos, watch videos, scrutinize your videos, man. But go the spirit of heaven, click on one of your videos and listen. And if it's off, man, then it's a problem. Okay, and it starts with us as the heads. Then it goes down to the soldiers, man. And when I was in the army, it was like that, man. Shit rolls downhill, man. Judgment rolls downhill. But if I'm doing what I gotta do, you're supposed to be doing what you gotta do. We're leading by example. You men, you gotta understand, you, there's people watching y'all, man. There's people actually sitting down, I watch brothers' videos. It's brothers watching your videos, even brothers that might not think that, oh, I'm a leader, or I'm a teacher. Hey, if I hit your video, we watching it. Guess what? It's other brothers watching, other sisters watching, man. And you can lead somebody astray if you don't rightfully divide the word of truth, man. Okay? So you always want to make sure that you, you know, I just want to bring that out in the beginning. You always want to make sure that you rightfully divide the word of truth. You got something to say, brother? Well, I had to speak to uh, This is First Peter 3 and 15. But sanctify the door power in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Right, so that's how we're supposed to answer questions, man. With meekness and fear by the Lord, that if I don't answer this man's question, I'm going to do this man's question correctly. According to the scriptures, man, that the Lord's going to do something to me, man. If you got people that come up with their own doctrines, they sit up in a room and say something in your mind, you just take the doctor pull out your ass. That's because you don't fear the Lord, man. You don't fear. You don't fear the Lord. If you're not doing what's asked of you, as it is in the scriptures, you don't fear the Lord, man. That's why it says, you know, be ready always. You know, so but to be ready is to, to know what you're talking about, to know the scriptures, and to know what's going on, you know, in, in, in the world. You know, so that you can filter it through the scriptures, man. Well, being ready means to be prepared. Prepared, yeah. yeah. Proper pre-planning prevents piss poor performance, man. And you can tell if somebody hasn't been properly prepared. Because if I give you, a, if I ask you an answer to a question, you're going to give a, a wrong answer, and it's not properly prepared, man. You brothers familiar with the uh, the breakdown in Daniel 72? Well, we'll just go to it. Let's get Daniel 2, verse 40, man. We're going to break it down, man. Let me, uh, 2 and 40, Daniel 2 and 40. Daniel 2 and 40. This is Daniel chapter 2 and verse 40. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as I am. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 36. This is the dream, and we will and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou O king. So so what, what is the story you're talking about? What dream are you? Who had a dream? You know what you're talking about? That's right. That's right. It says, uh, Thou O king art the king of kings, for the most high of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power and strength and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beast of the field and the fowls of heaven hath he given into thine hand and hath made thee ruler over them all, thou art his head of gold. Yeah, so the Most High put Nebuchadnezzar in a power. And Nebuchadnezzar's 
kingdom, which was the Neo Babylonian, Neo Assyrian Babylonian captivity, or the Assyrian Neo Babylonian, uh, he was going to be the head of that captivity that was going to bring in the children of Judah, okay? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi into captivity. Right. But that that head, his his kingdom was the top one. And then it's going to tell you it's a body. So go ahead, brother. Verse 38. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, beasts and the, oh, and the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven, oh, hath he given into thine hand. So the Lord gave King Nebuchadnezzar all this power. So he was giving him a vision, but that vision, he couldn't understand it. Right. Go ahead. It says, and had made thee rule over them all, thou art his head of gold. Yep. And so, so the Babylonian captivity, when you look at the Babylonian captivity, who under Nebuchadnezzar, that was the top one. That was the top, that was the best one out of all of these. You had the Roman, you had the Greek, you had the Roman, you had the, uh, you had the, uh, the Neo Roman, you had the New Roman with the divided kingdom, which we're in right now. You had that going on, and you would think that, oh, this is the best. You see many of the parties, big ass houses and shit. You like, oh, this is nice. But they don't compare to what they were doing back then. Because they, even in Nebuchadnezzar's uh, kingdom, they weren't destroying the earth the way that Esau was doing that. Verse 39, and after and after these shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee. So, and so another says, after these shall rise another kingdom that's inferior to that kingdom. And what kingdom, what kingdom was that? What kingdom came after the Babylonian the Babylonian kingdom? Right. So it was inferior to the one that was at top. Go ahead. It says uh or inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall... Hold on, hold on. Who, in, in, a, in a medial Persian kingdom, who was the, uh, who was the strongest out of the medial and the Persians? Who was the strongest? Persian. All right, Persians, that's right. Okay, so the Persians, and they represented the bear. Okay? Why was that? Because it says, yeah, let's, go to, let's go back to verse 39 real quick. Well, it has it right here. It's like, uh, Daniel 2 and 1. In the second reign, but go ahead, matter of fact, let's go to the top. It's like go so ahead. Hard to like yeah, go to Daniel 2 and Daniel 2 and verse 1, it says, And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed a dream uh, where, wherewith his spirit was troubled and his knee break from, from him. Verse 31, it says, Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, this a great image. This great image whose brightness was excellent stood before thee and the form and the form thereof was terrible this image this image or head was of fine gold his breast and his arms of silver his belly and his thighs of brass his legs of iron his feet part of iron and part of clay verse 38 and wheresoever the children of men dwell it well 39 it says and after thee shall arise, oh, so like, yeah, 38. It says, and, and wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given unto thine hand, and hath made thee the ruler over them all, thou art this head of gold. So, so the Babylonian kingdom was the head of gold. It was the strongest one. Well, it was the more opulent uh, one. It was, the, it was the best one, okay? But then as it as it goes from the head down to the feet, these different kingdoms they start to deteriorate and get lesser and lesser in growth and strength and power. Yeah, it, they go from they decrease in, in, in value but increase in, in, in strength and yeah. harshness, yeah. which is what ultimately, you know, the the captivities representing, you know, the, obviously all the captivities were bad, but the, the Babylonian is not nothing to be compared to, to, to the iron or to the iron makes it rich. But those metals are, you know, as you go down the line, gold is softer than silver. And silver is softer than brass, and brass is softer than iron. And iron being the strongest is where, you know, we want to know the harshest captivity. So the severity of the punishment that, that, that we went through. It says, uh, verse 39, and after me, Shall arise, shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, 
which shall bear rule over all the earth. Now, what was that kingdom? Uh, it's right here in front of you. Oh, the Greek Empire. Oh, so the Greek Empire. The Greek Empire. So you know that uh, Alexander the Greek, he had control over all, control over all the Roman world at that time, including Israel. Okay. Uh, verse 40, it says, And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as iron breaketh in pieces, and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. Yep, and so that was the Roman Empire. Right. You just read it, verse 40, keep reading. Verse 41, and, and whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of pottery clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with the miry clay. Now what does the iron and the clay stand for? What does that represent? What, represent? What's that? The, the division amongst the, 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 the leadership of, of Esau. Right, and what else? And uh, it's, it's part strong in, 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 in some places and part weak in another. Give, an, exa give an example of a, of a strong nation within, the, within that, that nation. The, the strong nation Babylon, aka America. Okay, so, so the, would it give me an example of a weak nation? Uh, well, give me give me one from Europe. Give me a strong nation out of Europe and a weak nation out of Europe. London, the Britain, UK, okay. UK, okay. okay. and then uh, Greece or like Italy. Yeah, those are weak, those are weaker nations. Right? And then what, would, what made them weak through that play was that, uh, that debt. And yeah, they had no the money. Their financial, their financial strength was weak. But when you look at the UK, Britain, it's strong. Okay, and it's, and it's all mingled up. What's an example of a conglomerate of all of these weak kingdoms and strong kingdoms right now in Europe? United Nations. What, what, what? Not the United Nations. Uh, what, what, the EU, the EU. The EU. What's the EU stand for? Uh, European Union. Exactly. The European Union, man. So, we're in this last land. We're in a divided kingdom. The Roman, it's really the Roman kingdom all over again, but it's divided this time. Whereas in the, in, the, in the Iron Age, it was strong, it was together. They still had mad divisions going on, but they, their army was superior, but they were stretched out, they were stretched thin. Same thing that's happening right now. The, uh, the Roman army, the, the uh, chief of the U.S., okay, the, the military, the U.S. is the military arm of, uh, of the beast system. Real quick, real quick. This is, uh, Shall mingle themselves with the sea of seed of men, 
uh, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it again. Um, Daniel 2 and verse 43, and whereas thou sawest the iron mixed with fire and clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, and even as iron is not mixed that? with clay. You see that? You see that with some of these European nations? They're not moving together. Like uh, uh, the Balkan the Balkan countries, the Baltic countries, they want to be a part of NATO, but uh, the, the EU, they're not having it. Right? Brexit also. Like Brexit, 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 they're already out. Yeah, yeah. They're already out of the EU. So like you said, it's like part together and we that together. It says, uh, but they shall not cleave one to another. So they're not cleaving one to another. Brexit, like, they felt like they were a strong state and they were giving all this money to these weak nations. These na weak nations either not paying back or they're not doing what they want to do. So what they do, they separated themselves from it, man. So now, Britain is out of the EU, man. And you got other countries uh, uh, talking about leaving the EU like Germany. And then some of these, some of these uh, European Union countries, they're doing business with uh, Russia, man. Especially when it comes to natural gas, because they don't have no natural gas over there in the UK and Germany like that, man. So they got to import that gas to heat in the houses for uh, for fuel and all kinds of other things, man. That's right. So what they, they got to go to their enemy for that, man. So ultimately, when this thing go down, hey, these tin horns, can you get that? The tin horns, these tin horns, they're gonna turn on this whore. The tin horns, they're gonna turn on a whore of Babylon, which is America, man. Right. Okay? Because even during the time of Donald Trump, but he was trying to get these nations to do certain stuff and they wouldn't do it. So he was saying, look, we're going to take our money back. We're going to pull out our, our economic shrimp from you and because uh, you guys ain't paying up quick enough, man. And they felt like they were doing all the work. The other nations were doing very little. And on top of that, they got opinions, man. So like the chief says, that they're not going to be together. Daniel 2 and verse 43, and whereas thou sawest the iron mixed with iron clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, yeah. even as iron is not mixed with clay. So they're cleaving with the other nations, they, they're dealing with the other nations, but they're not cleaving together, man. They're in constant conflict, man. That's right. Okay, keep it. Uh, verse 44, and in, the, and in the days of these kings shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Yep. And what kingdom is that? The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Israel, Yahshua Allah, man. Right. Who's gonna lead it? Yahweh Shai, King David, the rest of the 12, the elect. Go ahead. Which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom. Yeah, our kingdom's never gonna be destroyed. Unlike this kingdom, it's about to go down in flames, man. That's right. Matter of fact, look at Daniel 7. Go to, uh, start at 16 or 15. <laughs> um, Says, and the kingdom shall not be left to another people. And the kingdom shall not be left to another people. So our kingdom is going to be eternal, man. And we, we're going to be the real eternals, man. That's right. Okay? We're not going to be able to die. There ain't going, there ain't going to be no issues with our life and, uh, life and, and, and death because we're going to be 100% righteous. So the Lord is going to be with us 100% fully, man. So our kingdom is not going to be left to another. Like these past kingdoms that we just read about, they were left from one people to the next, man. But the kingdom of heaven is going to be for us, the Israelites, go ahead. It says, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and they shall stand forever. So, Yahweh Shai is that great millstone that's going to break in pieces all of these kingdoms, okay? And what? And his kingdom is going to stand forever, man. Great. And that's what Yahweh Shai is coming to do. He's coming to get those crowns. That's why I said, on his head with, on his head with many crowns, man. Because he took the leadership from out of the hands of all these different nations, man. Right. You know, the lessons of our people, they can't understand what we're talking about. They're just walking by and looking. I, I noticed a lot of people just staring at us, man. Yeah, yeah. But that's, that's okay because this is above their pay grade. Go ahead. Uh, it says, verse 45, For as much as thou sawest that the, that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver and the gold, the great power hath made known to the king what shall come to pass there, thereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. That was it, right? 
So yeah, so Yahweh Shai, when he comes back, he's gonna take this man out of power completely. He's gonna take these heathen nations out of power completely, man. That's right. All right? He's gonna take their rulership. He's gonna destroy their armies. He's gonna use us to destroy their armies. All right? So they're gonna bring them down to their knees, man. He's gonna destroy their bastion of glory called America. It's gonna be destroyed by nuclear fire. And the vast majority of you people that's walking the earth today, you don't even see that coming. You just think that it's, it's gonna be another sunny day, a beautiful day. And then when all hell break loose, it's gonna come out of nowhere for you because you aren't looking. Right. This is what we're telling our people, okay? If you wanna escape the wrath of the Lord, you need to turn back to the Haobashi on the shot and repent. Because we're in a time of repentance. We're in a time of great suffering is about to happen in this world, man. More than what you've ever seen before, man. Uh, turmoil, uh, disruption of nations, perplexity, group perplexity, all of that's coming. Great. All right? Uh, Daniel yeah. This is Prophet Daniel chapter 7 and verse 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body and the visions of my head troubled me. I came, verse 16, I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. Verse 17, these great beasts which are four yes. are four kings. So what, what four kings was that? With the great beasts? It said these Babylon. great kings. Well, it was four kings. One, two, three, four, four, yep. Three. I'm sorry, go ahead. You break it down. You read. Daniel 7, 17. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. What was those four kings? Yeah, those are the, the four major uh, empires, the Babylonian, Medo Persian, the Greek Empire, and the Roman Empire. That's right. Verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever. Who are the saints? Man? The Israelites. The Israelites. The Israelites. It says, gather my saints together unto me that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Who, who made a covenant with the most high by sacrifice? The Israelites. So we're the saints. We got again. Daniel 7, verse 18. But the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever. So we're going to take the kingdom. How are we going to take it? Through Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. When Yahweh Shai comes back, he's going to, that's going to be the beginning of him taking this world into his control. We're going to go along, we're going to be elected, we're going to be saved up into those chariots. Our bodies are going to be changed and renewed, okay? Our spirits are going to be into these new terrestrial bodies. And, I, and after that, we're going to come out of those chariots and we're going to take the kingdom. We're going to take the earth, man. And we're going to do it in a brutal manner, man. Right. It's going to be righteous, but it's going to be a righteous, brutal manner, man. We're going to take it. We're going to destroy your, your armies. Any, any military weapons that's left over from this Third World War, are going to be set on fire to the blaze with so wisdom of solomon 5 and 17 he shall take to him his jealousy for a complete armor and make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies so the lord is going to make us the we, we are the creature we're going to be made the lord's what there's another scripture that said the lord saying he's going to make us, us his battle axe and weapons of war man he's going to make he's going to he said he's going to make us his weapon man can you can you imagine being a made a, a, a human weapon man? They show you big, they show you movies of that shit like the, the, the X Men. They'll show you movies like uh, the Avengers. Okay, the Wolverine Weapon X. We're gonna be the real weapons, man. Right. And we and the Lord ain't gonna have to gel us together with technology, man. He's just gonna give us a spirit, man. We're gonna have the spirit of Yahweh Shai dwelling on us, in us, around us. We're gonna be gods on the earth. Man. Yeah. Real quick, that, that's why, you know, to put it in perspective, man, look at what Esau has done with his super soldiers, with his AI, all these things, man. You've got men that, you know, they, they've been uh, enhanced 
you know, you know, science and technology and shit that could be some crazy shit. Hey, like you, you know? saw the Koreans, the Korean uh, super soldiers, man. The niggas walk, niggas just ran through Lies. a fucking uh, a plate of a cement, man. Just ran through with his face, man. Beating on each other uh, with, with knives and shit, glass, broken glass. Yeah, Beating on their bodies with bricks and, and, and hammers and shit, and not being cut. And you see this shit like, oh shit, hey. what, what can I do against that? And, 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 and even when you see, you know, the the magicians and all the shit that they, they're able to do on the left-hand side, man, hey, the Lord's going to give us permission because, you know, I was talking with somebody and they were asking me about, you know, magic and what I thought about all that shit. And, and people really believe it's like a, a, a lot of hands or, or like a trick, but it's not, man. These magicians really do, set, like, make crazy sacrifices. They sacrifice animals and humans. And they're given power by these demonic entities, man. So they're basically getting getting power from the Moose High without permission to, to perform these tricks and these acts, man. They're getting it from That's right. But the Heavenly Father is going to give us access. He's going to tell us, you know what? You, now you have access to everything. Control of the elements, of spirits, of everything. So, hey, damn, he's in trouble, man. Oh, uh, this is the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 51, and verse 20. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, for, th for with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. So that's what the Lord's going to do. He's going to, he's going to, he's going to use us to break these nations and to dust to shatter them. Right. And then after we shatter them, after we destroy their kingdoms, because they're going to have, still have armies. And, and, and they're going to try to fight us, man. Right. And that's okay, because we said the, the word in there was try. You can try, but you're not going to succeed, man. That's right. Okay? You're going to try to fight us, and then we're just going to just decimate you, man. And it, it ain't going to take thousands, thousands of, of us to do it, man. One man is going to be able to do it, man. One, one Israelite man is going to be able to destroy hundreds of thousands of people, man, with one blow, man. That's right. And you don't believe it, but hey, you gotta see it to believe it, man. Yeah, and, and it's not gonna be a war that's gonna last decades and years no, no. and shit. Like, nah, man. It's gonna be swift, man. That's right. It's gonna be swift, man. We're gonna enslave you, man. We're gonna take you down just like you did us. You took us down, you enslaved us, because the Lord gave you the power to do so. And then, right. not only did he give you the power, but then you took license and leisure to do other shit. You took it above and beyond. As the scripture says, I was sorely displeased with the nations, man. If I was a little bit uh, well, he was just a little bit displeased with us, man. And y'all, y'all just took license, man. Okay, it was a time in this place where, where our lives really truly didn't matter. You know, where it wasn't nobody speaking up on our behalf, which is really not nobody doing that now, except the elect. But it was a time in this world where you could kill a, a Israelite man or woman or child with impunity, man. You can, uh, you, you don't like the way we looked at you. You can take our eye out and chop our heads off. You can murder us and put us to death and nobody say nothing. What, what happened during, during, when you were conquering the Americans? What happened when you were enslaving the Israelites all across the world, man? Y'all was just doing whatever y'all wanted, but all you nations had a hand in it, man. That's right. So the, all you nations are going to suffer, and that's in the world. That's right. It's the book of Zechariah, chapter 1, and verse 14. So the angel that commanded, that communed with me, said unto me, cry thou. You with the king, I know you keep eternal roses. Zechariah 1 and 14. So the angel that communed with me said unto me, cry thou, saying, thus say the Yahweh, our host, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy, and I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease for I was but a little yeah, because displeased. These, these nations are at ease when they see us at this, at a, at this lowest state. Y'all were, were comfortable because y'all knew that as long as we were sinning and sinning and, and living in that, that we were separated from our power, your power about was shot. As long as you kept the name away from us, as long as you kept us separate from what we were supposed to be doing, then you were at ease, man. You weren't thinking right. about us rising up against you. You weren't thinking about 50 years ago when, when all hell was breaking loose during the Jim Crow era. Okay, during the civil rights era, 60, 70 years ago, you people wouldn't give a fuck, man. Y'all were just doing what you wanted to do. Y'all were at ease with it, because the Lord wasn't judging you, 
okay? He wasn't bringing no hard judgment, no swift judgment on you. So he just thought that the Lord forgot about us, man. So much so that you try to replace just us with yourself, man. That bullshit uh, 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 replacement theology, man. I'm talking about the Lord just set aside the Israelites and he chose the so-called Christian church. But you people, you're not, you're not the real Christians, man. You don't believe in the Messiah, the Holocaust, the okay? That promise of everlasting life wasn't given to you. That's for, that's for the children of Israel, man. And you have to be an Israelite in the flesh and the spirit, man. Right. In, order to, in order to receive that blessing, man. And on top of that, you got to be part of the elect of Israel to receive it full throttle, man. If you're two-thirds, you're going to have to die, then you're going to receive it, man. The same must know it at the death, death by, by pain. pain. That's right. It says, and I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. And then all, all these nations, all you heathen nations, all you heathen nations are at ease right now. Right. You see these fucking gooks, they come over. It's like in America, in any, in any South American country too, wherever these heathen at, where we at, they, they put it in Jake's face, man. Right. They come over here to the American first generation gook, and these niggas are driving in the highest the, the multi hundred thousand dollar cars, living in multi million dollar homes. They ain't give shit, they ain't been through shit. Okay, they get these free loans from the government. From the government. They get these free, uh, free. Uh, they get these free loans from the government. They get these, uh, they get these uh, bank loans. They get these uh, uh, contracts. And they flex over our people. And they look at us. They look down on us. Like, like what's wrong with y'all? Why y'all can't work to get what you got? Man? You know. Right. But not realizing the system is set up against us and set up for you. Man. Go ahead, bro. It says, oh, I was but a little displeased and they helped forward the affliction. So you nations, you helped forward our affliction. You see that, you see what's going on around us, man. I was uh, I was I was reading this book called How White Folks Got So Rich, man. Matter of fact. This book right here. Yeah, because the only reason these these nations are at ease is because of you know well, what they did unto our people, man. The you know the captivities they you know they took us in, and and and, and ultimately now in this captivity and the east of Edom, well, all these nations help you know east of destroy us, man. Starting up. Ammites and Ishmael, you know, but even Ammon and, and, and Moab, they all had to do with it, man. Yeah, then, then you nations, I thought, nasty look at us as if we did something wrong, like, we, like we're just constantly doing something wrong when we complain about our oppression. When we, when we have something to say about our oppression, we look at us and say, well, why don't you just work harder? Why don't you just pull yourself up by your bootstraps? Okay? Why don't you just shut up? We don't want to hear that. But when you go through something, we got to keep remembering that shit. You put that shit in, in our in our in our in our in our eye portals, you put it in our minds, you put it in your doctrines and your books, your education, and you just keep hammering it over and over again, as if the so-called uh, 1948ers, as if they what they went through so-called in the Holocaust was more detrimental than what we went through during the, just just talking about one era, the transatlantic slave period, and the establishment of the American. Right. Way more people died and was abused and destroyed than it was in 1945, man. Right. Way more people, man. You did way more atrocities to the children of Israel than you did to these other nations, man. They don't know Daniel 9 and 12. This is the book of uh, Psalms, chapter 50 and verse 18. When thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him and hast been partaker with adulterers. Verse 19, thou givest thou mouth to eat Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, thou slanderest thine own mother's son. Verse 21, these things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself. So all those, all those atrocities, all the slander, because we the Israelites, we're more closely related to the so-called white man than we are any other nation on the planet Earth, man. We actually came out of the same man and same woman, man. But what did this double do? He slandered us, man. Okay, you make up doctrine about how 
you know, being so-called black, which we're not black, like that one sister said, we're brown. We're different shades of fucking brown, man. We're not black people. And you're not white. You're different shades of pink and red. Okay? But yet you slander us and say that there's something, there's something wrong with our minds, that we're inferior to you. When in reality, you're the inferior man. Okay? So you thought that you thought that, that was it. You thought that the most high was with you, man. Because all those things you've done and the Lord kept quiet, man. But the whole time, get a uh point twenty one. The whole time the Lord was setting you up to destroy you, man. He was setting you up so that you can be destroyed ultimately, man. This real quick, it's out of this book for how white folks got so rich. And it's talking about the Jim Crow era. The term Jim Crow softens the harsh and violent system of repression established not to keep black from using white drinking fountains and toilets or even to stop them from breaking the law, but to keep black from accumulating property, starting businesses, engaging in trade and commerce, and establishing an economic base independent of white people, man. And that's what you see these other nations have when they get here. They have an economic base that's semi-independent from the white people, man. That's why you'll never really see gooks coming to a shop where the niggas, niggas live at, or the Spanish live at. They never shop there. Where they shop at is where Esau is at, or where they at, man. Their money cycles through their, recycles and recycles through their community several times over before it leaves their community, man. And you had, you had places in America during the time in the 20s and the 30s where Jake, where we was knee deep in the Jim Crow era and um, who, who was happening, man? Jake had their own communities, economic bases. A, a, a famous one is called Tulsa, Oklahoma, Greenwood, right? And what were they, what were they doing in Tulsa, Oklahoma? They had, they had economic uh, bases, man. You had Jake was owning businesses, real businesses, man. Transportation companies, uh, banks, okay, uh, uh, drug stores. So they had an independent economic base. And what did he saw do? He came and raised that shit to the ground. He destroyed it, man. What did he do? He destroyed it, man. And why did he destroy it? Was it just because he just envied you? No, because he wanted you to be oppressed, man. He wanted to he wanted to put you down, man. He don't he didn't want you he didn't want us to stand up. He wants us to be slaves as always, man. Bring Lamentations 4 and 21 out. It's the book of Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, mm -hmm. that dwellest in the land of us. Yeah, America is the modern day land of us. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. Go ahead. The, the cup also shall pass through unto, unto thee. What cup? What cup is going to pass through unto you? That cup of oppression, man. That cup of destruction, man. That cup of slavery. That cup of disenfranchisement. That cup of, of, of lowliness. You about to get that, man. Because Wait. we drink and get the scripture where it says, uh, was it Jeremiah 49 and 12? Or uh, it was not, hold on, but it was not set. Those who were, uh, that should have drunk me. Because it was that, that cup that it's talking about right there is that a cup of the dregs, man. And our people, we drinking it. We're still drinking it, man. You got Jake, they proud to be uh, uh, wicked, man, and evil. They proud to be gangbangers. You don't see that shit with so-called white people, Chinese, Arab. Where they gangs at, man? Where they street gangs at, man? Where they ghettos at? They don't live in them shits, man. And then when they do something, some type of poverty, they want you to feel sorry for these niggas, man. Fuck you, man. Our people been living in this condition forever. That's what the word ghetto means. It's a corner. Man, all that confusion, man. This is what Esau's kingdom is all about, man. There ain't gonna be none of that in the, in the kingdom of heaven, man. There ain't gonna be no damn ambulances, blaring noises, sirens and noises and lights and shit, man. Speeding through the street, man. Unsafe, right? Un unsafe, unsafe speeds, man. Trying to get somewhere. To save a fucking sinner. To save a sinner, a wicked, man. Yeah, a wicked ass person. A wicked person, man. Some Edomite them caught a heart attack while eating some goddamn pork chops, man. 
Good. Here's the book of Jeremiah 49 and verse 12. For thus saith the how won't behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup, yeah. have a surely drunk Because the Lord didn't set us up for, to, to do that. Uh, that. That wasn't our judgment. The Lord, our judgment was to rule over these nations in righteousness, man. Yeah. Teach them of our ways, man. Right. So that they can live in harmony on the earth, man. Maybe not with each other, but in harmony with the uh, with the Lord and his creation. Right. Huh? So uh, that wasn't our judgment. Our judgment wasn't to be niggas and spits and thugs and bitches and hoes and harlots. That wasn't our that wasn't our judgment, man. But now that's what that's all you see when it comes to our people, man. Keep it up. And are thou he that shall altogether go and punish? Yeah, that shall not go and punish. So you're not gonna go unpunished. You either might you believe that look that was whatever happened to you black and latino people and native american people that was the past those people that did that are dead and gone so you thought there was no judgment for that so you thought that oh i could just keep on living in splendor and wealth and advancing and glory of my forefathers indirectly because they don't they don't go home and sit and think about thomas Thistlewood. they don't think about uh uh, uh, uh What's that nigga named Thomas Jefferson? You don't think about uh 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 in order to establish this place, man. What are they doing? They just living in glory, man. They living, they benefiting off of the wickedness of their forefathers, man. But then when some shit pop up, when when, when the truth comes out, now you get offended, man. Like the scripture says, the children shall be, uh, 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 rough paraphrase and angry because they're gonna be reproached for the uh, father's sins. for their father's sins, man. Ecclesiastes 41 and seven, man. So so they're being, they're, they, they're, they're, they're angry because we can't curse out these other these Edomites that were ruling. We gotta curse you out, man. Because you are your forefather in a reincarnation, man. You are your four you're your forefathers and foremothers in a reincarnation, man. Just like you black, Latino, Native American people, you're the you're the four you're the forefathers of our, of old, man, of the Israelites, man. You got a more Wicked Israelites that, that denied the Lord, you know, that gave up our Lord Yahweh Shai unto the Romans, man, to be crucified. You know? So the same thing with the Edomites. You are your forefathers, man. And, and, and the things you have done in the past, whether you are two thirds of our nation or, or you one of these heathen nations, man, all those things you did unto our people, man, you better pay for it. Again, back in his book real quick. Oh no. Back in Jeremiah 49 and verse 12, it says, For thus saith the Lord power, behold, those whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunk it. So we, we drunk it. And you can clearly see this multiple evidence on top of evidence that we drunk. We're still drinking it to this day. That's right. To this day. Like my man Deontay Wilder said, to this day. We still drinking it, man. Right. Still under the curses, still being oppressed, still being repressed. Repression is on us. You just, you just pressing us to the, to the, to the, to the white meat, man. Right. Just, and a doubt he that shall all together go unpunished. So are you Edomites going to go unpunished? The, the answer to that is hell no, man. Thou shalt not go unpunished. You're not gonna go unpunished, man. Thou shalt surely drink of it. You gonna drink of it? You gonna drink of the tracks, man? You see these Edomites caravanning, caravanning to the world, uh, traveling the world, walking around, half-ass dressed, just smiling, living their life. Don't understand it. The reason why they're able to do that is because of what they, what they forefathers laid down, man. Right. Okay. You living in these cul-de-sacs in, the, in the, on the earth. You got the, you got the fatness of the earth. You go to the best schools, you eat the best foods, you live in the best areas. 
Ain't no violence, ain't no violence in these in these uh suburbs. Not on the level that it is in the, in the hood. That ain't even got a that ain't even got a slang word for where Edomites live at, man. What's the slang word for where Edomites live at? Oh, the suburbs. The birds. How did you get there? You had to, in order to, in order for you Edomites to even get to the birds, you had to keep Jake in the ghetto, man. And make it make you had to make laws, like redlining laws that stop us from even moving into your neighborhood, man. If one of our people move into a so-called white neighborhood, it's gonna bring down, so-called bring down, uh, according to them, it's supposed to bring down the property value, man. Cause you don't want, and they got a saying, there goes the neighborhood, man. Why do they say there goes the neighborhood when one of us move in there, man? And you Jake's, you move into these neighborhoods hoping to, hoping to get, escape the hood, man. But you gotta pay double the cost of the house in order to live out there, man. Right. Here it is, you pay a double with an Edomite because you don't know what your neighbor Edomite never paid for their house. You don't know that. You ain't looking it up on public record or anything. Right. And then when and even that shit is a lot. They probably paid a hundred thousand for the crib, now it's worth a million. You have to pay two million to get up in there, man. And he's still house poor. You got a house, but you can't pay to maintain a motherfucker, man. You take you, you don't understand where you at, man. Right. It says uh, in this book, it says, uh, it says uh, the functional intent was to force free blacks onto the plantation to perform the same roles they had been forced to carry out for the previous 310 years. Laws against Jews and Nazis in Germany in effect for a few years could not compare in, the scope, in their scope or viciousness to those applied to blacks under the American freedom and democracy. The laws were unambiguous. Blacks cannot be employed in, the, in, their, in any jobs other than plantation labor without specific license granted, granted by a judge. If a black worker left his job for any reason, including employer abuse or unpaid wages, he could be arrested and put in a public works project, clearing forests, draining swamps, building roads, bridges, railroads, or, or, or canals, man. And then you got, then you go into, then you skip over, and you go these in, niggas love these places, man. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Then you skip know? over, right? And you got something called unions, man. Check this out. Check this out. Labor union ra racial clean cleansing of America labor. The labor union movement of the late 1800s was arguably done more to destroy, per, to destroy black progress than any other known action of white people. Yet, it is almost totally invisible in written histories of blacks in America. The union movement was specifically designed to remove blacks from their jobs and skilled trades, which they dominate and install in those jobs there, the European immigrants who were flooding into the Americans by the, by the millions. Scholars attribute the rapid success of immigrant groups directly to the advancement they received through their membership in the American trade union. White historians have misrepresented blacks in slavery as being mere field hands, but blacks held a virtual monopoly on almost all skilled and unskilled labor. They were the engineers, builders, tailors, shoemakers, carpenters, store masons, weavers, furnitures, cabinet makers, plumbers, painters, sailors, boat makers, Car carriage makers, blacksmiths, printers, and every other type of skilled artisan, Southern, uh, 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 Southern writer Thomas Nelson Page said that after slavery, the black man was without a rival in the entire field of industrial labor. Throughout the South, 95% of all the industrial work of the Southern states was in the hand and what was in his hand, and he was fully competent to do it. Every adult was either a skilled laborer or a trained mechanic. Indeed, it was once said that if a white man were to be seen in public doing any form of skilled labor, he would draw a crowd of gawky onlookers, man. So our people had all these high-skilled jobs. But what happened? You created these unions and you cut Jake out, man. And now you, got, now you look at our people as uh, 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 lazy, bums, shiftless, Okay, that's what you, that's the majority of you Edomites think about people, man. But look, you had you to create a whole system to block us out, man. Because our people have all those skills, right? 
and guess what? They weren't being paid for them. They had all these skills, and it was free. That's why I said, if you saw Edomite like doing, doing some manual labor, you'd be gone. What's going to be the same way in the kingdom of heaven? You're never going to see an Israelite do any skilled labor at all. Even though we're going to have the skills to do it, but we ain't going to do it. Y'all going to be the skilled labor, man. And you ain't gonna get paid shit for it, man. You ain't, you ain't gonna create no union to protect you, man. Ain't gonna be no union labor. Ain't gonna be no unions in the kingdom of heaven, man. Right. Especially that first thousand years, man. Just get ready for all hardcore work. All your, your, your pay is work. More work. You finish one task, you're getting three more. You finish three tasks, you're getting a thousand more. The union is gonna be the union of punishment. Well, you fucking eat the mice, man. Yeah, man, that shit is crazy because, I mean, the scripture do, do say that what? That that Jacob is the former of all things, man. And we always say, man, if, if you give a a, 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 a fair race, a, a fair, uh, how do you call it? A fair, a fair shot. A fair shot to a so-called Negro and a so-called Latino versus a white man, hey, who will fucking destroy them, man? With, with intelligence or, 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 or skill or craft or creativity. Creativity, man. Yep, our acumen on all levels, whether it be business, That's whether right. it be on industry, the industry. You can't, right. you can't match it, Israelites, man. That's and right. you got look at niggas in the hood, niggas in the hood with these gangs and these drug, these drug uh, conglomerates, man. They were running Fortune 500 companies, man. That's what they said. Like BMF, that whole big niche and shit, shit. Yeah. Niggas, that niggas was country, that was countrywide, bro. Not just Detroit, localized. They were, they were countrywide, man. And they said that this man and his brother was running a Fortune 500 company for decades, man. Under, okay. off the books, man. Yeah, he's on, he's, but it's still, hey, these niggas had operations. <laughs> these niggas had operations in Philadelphia, New York, Atlanta, California. It takes logistics, man, to run something like that, bro. You just ain't gonna wake up one day and say, we, we be countrywide, man. You gotta have logistics, man. You gotta know who's traveling, what's traveling, how much is coming. You never, that's why they said you never saw Meech or his brother with drugs. They didn't catch him with drugs, man. Because they had to have it. Just like you don't see the CEO of Frito-Lay with a bag of chips, man. You'll never, you'll never see the CEO or the COF or the CFO of, of Lay's potato chips eating Lay's potato chips, man. Why? Because they don't have to touch it, man. That's for the low-level people, man. Well, these men were doing this shit, man. So if they can do this shit in wickedness, how much more in righteousness, man? Right. So can you imagine if they would have tried to do some business like that? It would have shut it down. It would have shut, shut it down. They let them niggas run that drug operation so they got tired of it so they can get money from it, man. And, and use that money for other nefarious purposes, man. Right. And now all that BMF shit is nothing but a story that's being told on Star's Network, man. Right. All that shit that these dudes did, they, they, said, they said it was so tight that these, these niggas never had a falling out. You know, over some, some niggas, low level niggas, have fallen out about behind a woman, behind some money and cars and all this other shit. Hey, not being left, man. Hey, them niggas had shit tight, man, like a fist, man, so that they couldn't they couldn't be penetrated except from within, man. And that's how they fell down. Meanwhile, you got Fortune 500 companies doing the same damn thing with the same wickedness and irregularities, but they're not being carted off in the court. You're not carting off Microsoft. In the court, Facebook, Big Pharma. Hey, and Big Pharma, the biggest drug dealers on the planet Earth, man. Right, right. They got people hooked on opioids like it ain't nothing, man. They got a new show on uh, Hulu. I was, I was going to start watching it, man. It's about how Big Pharma was lying about the opioids, man. I forget the name of the show, but it's a good. It's, it's going like to be a good show, man. These niggas made contracts with the government to to basically get people. Uh, drugs paid for via yeah. the taxes, man. That yep. shit, these, these are some fucking devils, man. Devil, they, but they don't lock a nigga up and sell us some cocaine. <laughs> Not saying that them niggas is right. Yeah, got Because they're warlocks too. But I'm saying, like, if you're going to get one, then shouldn't you get the other two? That's right. What makes, what makes, what makes heroin different from Oxycontin, man? Nothing. Same shit. Or, 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 they got this thing right now where a lot of the drugs are being uh, pushed in with, what's, it's, it's a, it's a uh, what's the name of that shit, man? Oh uh, man, it's a drug, it's, they're putting it in all the heroin now. Oh, uh, People dropping dead from it. Yeah, okay. uh, what's 
name of that shit. Huh? I forget the name of that shit. But it, they use it on horses. Yeah, but niggas, you can't get that shit in this. Niggas ain't getting that shit on the corner. Nah, that shit gotta come out of the fucking pharmaceutical industry, man. Yeah, yeah. I forget the name of that shit. But it got a lot of people dropping dead, man. Yeah, uh, fitting on. Water, brother. Fitting on, man. Hey, niggas in the, niggas in the projects ain't creating fitting on. Fitting on had to come out of one of those laboratories, man. So back in this book, it says, uh, indeed, it was once said that if a white man were to be seen in, okay, some light, if a white man was to be seen uh, doing any form of skilled labor, he would draw a crowd of gawking onlookers. White immigrant laborers could not compete with the black worker, so the unions came to the rescue. The most powerful union leader in America was Samuel Gompers, who led the American Federation of Labor, or the AFL. It is a formative, in its formative stage, under Gompers, the AFL systematically and violently carried out the occupational eviction of black workers. A common union expression was, never let a nigger pick up a tool. He wrote, Caucasian civilization will, will serve notice to blacks that its uplifting process is not to be interfered with in any way. So here it is, it, he was putting notice to Jake, that look, we gonna rise up above you, man, and you're not gonna, you're not gonna impede that. By the turn of the century, the black man, once the predominant worker in America, was locked in a lowest wage labor, or was totally jobless, forcing black women into the job market as farm workers, factory workers, maids, and white house, white and white homes. The higher wages of the unionized white male relieved white women of hard labor and provided them with the leisure. That's where you get the 1950s from. Leisure time finances for development of art literature, education, and culture. Union leaders staffed the licensing and professional certification boards and funneled all employment to Caucasian laborers while denying licenses and permits to black skilled craftsmen, further pushing black men back into the dead end low wages work under white authority. See, and you don't understand it, this, you don't understand this stuff. You just think that, oh man, I just was born one day, skip became my best friend. You know, Skip and uh, Zach became your best friend, man. Yeah, you said, Isaiah 10 and 1, woe well, unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness which they have prescribed. And, and all these things, the creation of those work unions, all those things are unrighteous decrees that Esau created to do what? To oppress and destroy our people, man. And to put himself above us. You know, that's why, you know, we always bring it out. You know, the, 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 the average male, the average so-called white male has over 200 years head start on, on the so-called Negroes, Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, man. But the average white but, family. That's right, but but, but you, James, you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, you really think you got a, a fair shot to run against these, these heathen nations, especially, you know, against Esau, man. And even in this book, it said that, like, the, 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 the average poor white family has $10,000 worth of, of money and their bank account versus the black ones have a negative net worth, man. You Jakes have a negative net worth, man. You look at the so-called Negro, Latino, Native American net worth in your family. What is, what's your net worth? It's negative, man. You ain't got no worth, man. But then you look at the average Edomite family and look at their net worth, and they, ain't, they got way more than you, man. They're broke, but they have they broke millions in assets. They, yeah, they got hundreds of thousands <laughs> and millions in assets, man. And you Jakes ain't got none of that shit. Right. Catching hell, man. This is the book of the prophet Micah, chapter 2 and verse 10. Arise ye and depart, but this is not your rest. Yeah, this place is not our rest, man. And every time, every corner and every turn you take in this place, it lets you know that this ain't your rest, man. Your rest. I don't care if you try to do everything, everything right, man. It still ain't going to be good enough, man. I'm not saying that you should do shit wicked, but we're just saying that, like, look, like, this place ain't for us, man. No matter where we go. You get, you, you get some money, you call yourself going to South America, you still gonna catch hell, man. You might live it up for a month or two, but then you back in the red, you gotta come back up here. You don't wanna be earning money in their currency because their currency ain't worth shit. Right. Well, America's currency is out too. This shit is worthless too. But it's the world currency right now. Right. It's the world reserve currency, man. Right. Even though it's worth nothing, okay? So this place ain't this ain't our rest, man. 
was uh, Deuteronomy uh, 28 and 65, and among these nations thou shalt have no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest, but Yahweh by Hashem Yahushua shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. Letting you know that again, going well, back to that scripture, man, you're not going to have no rest here, man. You know, you're always going to be on a, on, on a, on a, shoe, on a, on the losing side, yeah. you know, when it, when it comes to this world, to the things of this world, man. And that's why the Lord said that what, that, that basically to detach from this world, man. Yeah, we got to live, we got to pay our rent, you know, work and feed our families and stuff, but don't work for, for the treasures of this world, man. Because you're gonna end up being destroyed over those things, man. And at the end of the of the day, all those things that you're gonna work for on this side is gonna be in vain. You know? Back in his book, it says, uh, it says, uh, it says, uh, the AFL CIO's George Beatty, president of 1965 and 1979, once remarked, it never occurred to me to have niggers in the union. By 1967, that compromised 8% of the construction trade unions in a plumbing sheet metal. And even now, like a lot of the Latinos that's in these, these construction, they're not part of the unions, man. They're just cheap labor, man. It says, unionists and plumbing, cheap metal, electrical, asbestos, and elevator trades had only 1,400 black members out of a membership of 330,000. Today, the weak and ineffectual anti-discrimination laws make it easy for the construction unions to evade compliance with the anti-discrimination laws, just as their founding father, Samuel Gompers, had intended. Next to slavery itself, America's labor union's movement is is history's perfect example of how a system can be designed to catapult the white race into prosperity while simultaneously destroying all options and avenues for black racial progress. That's right. That is why Gompers likeness has been carved into the gaudy statue in the center of Washington, D.C. for all to admire. In 2017, without much difficulty, one can find a union job site with, in 2017, without difficulty, one can find a union job site without a single black label. We Southern whites are the best friends the Negroes has got, but we know that he really is what he really is. We know where he would go to if our sustaining hand, our constant pattern and example were not ever present, coercing him our way. Yeah, he was fashion, man. So, yeah, man. It's a good book, man. I'm still reading it. Reading it. Called, uh, how white folks got so much of the show. Okay. Sorry, man. Uh, I got a quick preset. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, this is the book of Daniel, chapter 8, and verse. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the uh, transgressors are come uh, to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentence shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, and he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty uh, and the holy people, and through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper that's what the Edomites are doing in his hand and he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many that's right and that's what Esau has done policy all throughout the years man you know uh, he established these these laws and these uh, you know uh, deals to what to, to help destroy our people man chiefly our people man because as we know these, these are the nations they're in cahoots with Esau man to, to do what? To destroy us, to, to keep us down, man. To keep dividing us and, and keep conquering us. To keep us away from our power, you know? And now that the Lord has, you know, reestablished his, his spirit upon upon his people, man. Hey, Esau is doing everything he can to, to, to stop his word, man. And now you see that these nations are afraid, you know? They're always been afraid. They 
know we're we going to torment the fuck out of you, man. And get our Revelation 11 and 18 and we down. 11 and 8. We down. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 11, starting at verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Right, because that's not talking about zombies, man. Even though our people are spiritual zombies. When you when you when you in a congregation of the dead, that means you out of the way of the scriptures, man. It's two thirds of our people. We, we even us, the whole for one third, we were in a dead state at once, man. To the Lord quickened our spirit, man. And now we're made alive in your by shot. Right. So these nations, they saw us in front of them, man. And they never told us once that we were the Israelites of Bible speaks of. Whenever you went to Christian church growing up, they never even talked to you about the Israelites like that, man. They always talk to you about some white dude named Jesus, man. And how he loves everybody. And how, how you wait for him to come back so you can go to heaven. That's all you've been told, man. But they never told you that we were the Hebrew Israelites the Bible speaks of, man. Right. Never once, man. Uh, Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. And that's America. Sodomy is practiced at a high level, all the way down to the lowest level. This, this place works off the vibration of ancient Egypt from the highest level to the lowest level. Man. Right. Okay? And we're citizens in this place. In order to be a, a resident of a, of a city, you have to be a citizen, man. That's why they call it something citizenship, man. You're a citizen of the Americas, man. Of North America, man. This place is Sodom and Egypt, all rolled into one. With the rest of those bound kingdoms we talked about earlier. Go ahead. It says, where also our Lord was crucified. His image was etched out. The dark image of Yahweh Shai was etched out. And this image... of all the people, especially the people on this side right here, especially you so-called native Latino people, man, and Negro people, man. You believe that a white man named Jesus is his savior, man. Not realizing that the outside is his savior, man, a black man, a so-called black man. And even when we bring this out, you get mad about what his color matter. But wait a minute, it matters for truth's sake. What it, why, why was this the image that was put on our people by way of violence, man? And then our people just accept it like it's nothing, man. You'll be looking for this guy before you're looking for this man. That's right. That okay. shit is insane. Like, they know all the shit that Esau and Edom has done to, to our people, but they still hoping that a so-called white man is going to come and deliver them from the trouble. Yeah, how, how can your oppressor be your savior, man? How can your oppressor be your savior? Same man that destroyed you, killed you, robbed you, and raped you. How can he be your, how can he be your savior? You niggas are making an excuse up for the so-called white man, but you won't make, make no excuse up for your own people, man. Right. And then you niggas, you know that the Lord is a so-called black man, but that's still not. Especially you hard-headed Latinos, man. You go down to South America, anywhere in South America, you go in any one of these niggas' houses, man. What's in there, man? Tessera Borgia, uh, Guadalupe. There's a bunch of white people, man. White idols, man. Sitting up on your fucking show. Here it is, your ass is well, as a can of fucking uh, uh, chocolate, man. Black is the ace of spades, man. And you out here worshiping a fucking Edomite, man. The same person that, that's how you can tell our people are destroyed, man. And why are, why are our people destroyed? For a lack of knowledge, man. You don't know the Lord, man. I don't give a damn if you get the most pious, the most faithful Christian in the world. He don't know the Lord, man. Right. You don't know the scriptures, man. And then we try to tell you, you don't want to hear it, man. We was out here break dancing and beating, beating on fucking buckets. You niggas be out here listening to us, man. Then you get offended because of the way we bring it to you, man. Fuck the people, man. We become their enemies because we tell them the truth, man. They, they, they hate him that rebuke is in the gates, man. Our people want to keep hearing that that 
uh, about that soft-spoken dude that loves everybody instead of hearing the truth, man. Because what? The truth basically condemns them. And if they don't repent, hey, it's going to keep condemning them, man. This is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. And that's how you can tell that the majority of the people on the side, they just don't believe, man. Even that, that, that black woman that came, that so-called brown woman that came up earlier, she don't believe, man. That bitch found up soon when we started talking, man. Her, the best thing was to let her big ass go, man. That little ass skirt on, man. Let her roll her fat ass out of block, man. She was gonna get cut. Yeah. It says, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Yahawashai, who is the image of the Most High, should shine unto them. Yeah, because what's going to happen is, if the light good on them, they're going to convert and they're going to believe and then they're going to be saved. But that shows you that the Lord don't want all his people to be saved. Give me Zechariah uh, 13 and 8, man. They get uh, Romans chapter 9, verse 6, man. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 13, and verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, Yahweh Shimon Shai, two parts therein shall be cut off. So two-thirds of our people are going to be cut off on his side, man. Since you want to worship Esau, you want to get his, you want to get his jump shot, you want to get his karagma, worship his image, you're going to die with this nigga, man. Right. You're going to die right along with his kingdom, man, in the flames of fire, man. And you're going to feel it, too. You're not going to pass out. You ain't going to get a shard of glass in your throat and go to the spirit world. You might get that, that shard of glass and still burn, nigga, while that shit melting in your face, man. Uh, but the third shall be left there. See, they don't tell you this in Christian church. Bring these scriptures out. They don't tell you that a third, two-thirds of the Lord's own people are going to be destroyed and the third is going to be left there in. They don't tell you that because niggas going to go to church and give you them tithes, man, and offerings. Niggas will stay home. That's right. Why do Christian church pastors and leaders, you complaining that your people are leaving for this, for the Israelites, man? Because that shit ain't helping them, man. You making T.D. Jakes rich, Joe Osteen rich, Kenneth Copeland rich. You making all these Edomite pastors and nigga pastors rich. And these niggas always come down in droves when some shit happened to you from a white cop, man. But then niggas ain't coming down in droves to stop you niggas from shooting and killing and stabbing and, and robbing and stealing and selling drugs right. on each other. They don't give a fuck. Zechariah 13 verse 8 again and it shall come to pass that in all the land saith the Lord two parts therein shall be cut off and die. So two thirds of you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans you're going to be cut off on this side man. And that's the vast majority of our people here in America man. You got a lot of our people coming up from South America right now, Caribbean islands right now as we speak, only to die. Some of, some of them coming up to be saved, but the majority of them coming up to die. Go ahead. It says, but the third shall be left therein. That's the one third. Gonna be left, gonna be saved out of this coming destruction, this impending destruction. And that's that's who this word is for, man. That's why you don't see nobody out here in, in, a, in a crowd, man. Unless there's some controversy going on, man. That's why you don't see nobody, not one person, not one person stop here today and answer a, a, a sincere question, man. Not even on the comment board. Not one question, man. Let's show you that this truth is, 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 a, is precious, man. Yeah, because yeah, people think well, we're out of here, we're out here to save everybody. Or to entertain you, man. We ain't here for entertainment, man. I'm, not, I'm, I'm sacrificing my life, man. Everything I got, which is nothing, but hey, it's something to the Lord. So I just, I'm, we're not here to tap dance for you, man. We're not here to hold your damn hand. We're here to teach you this word. Hopefully it'll wake you up and so you can repent. And because we fear you, how about you got a shot? That's right. This is not no goddamn entertainment. Life and death. That's right, life and death. Life and death. Right, Zechariah 13, verse 9. And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined. That's, and that's how the Lord doing with this adversity, man. 
That's all, that's all this is, the adversity, man. Because there's going to come a time when all hell break loose. You can't say nobody told me. We've been out here. We're a constant fixture out here. We like the light pole, man. We out here. No matter what. Rain, rain sleet, snow, hot, wet, cold. We out here, man. Actions speak louder than words. We out here, man. And even when we ain't out here, we at home doing videos, edifying, man. Doing our best. Doing our best to do it, man. We applying this word to our daily life. We get nothing for it on this side, man. But that's okay because that's where the reward come in at, man. It's good that you people are against us because that let us know that your how about you have a side is with us. Who could be against us? No, I got some more. Uh, Zechariah 13 verse 9, and I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people. And what's the name of the Lord? Yahweh Shemihah Shai. Yahweh Shai, man. Yahweh in the name of his son, Yahweh Shai, man. Right. And the Lord said he's going to hear us call that name. He's going to say, that's my people. Now you got right. people that know the name of the Lord, but they're not going to be heard, man. But the elect, that one third, that's brought to the fire, he's going to say, that's my people. Uh, they shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord, Yahweh, is my power. Yahweh is my power. Shai is my power. That's, right. That's when you get said in them chariots, man. This really had this really, this is real, man. Right. You're going to have some people, I'm pretty sure, who know the name of the Lord and Yahweh, and they're going to call on his name, but he's not going to listen to them. Nope. What is good to see about that? So, in the affliction, they should call me early, but I would not hear them. Uh, the book of Romans chapter 9 and verse 6 not as though the word of the heavenly father had taken none effect for they are not all Israel which are of Israel it don't mean that you the Israelite of the most high man no, you just, just a nigga that know you're an Israelite you a nigga in the world right. that's all you are you two thirds you're not the, you're not the Israelite to the most high says, uh, neither because they are of the seed of Abraham are the children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And that's what the promise is. That's how you know that supersessionism or, or so-called replacement theology is, is, a, is false, man. Because you got to be of the seed. What does it mean? Look it up in the book of the letter. That word for seed, man. You got to be of the seed of Israel, of Abraham, man. And that's talking about of the promises with Isaac. And then Jacob. And in the patriarchs, and the rest of us, man. Because we are the we are the sons of, of the patriarchs, man. We are the sons of Yahshua Allah, man. Jacob. The Greek word for C is a sperma. Sperma, and where did, did you get that word? That's where you get the word sperm from, man. Go ahead. It says from which it plant germinates the seed, or uh, i.e. the grain or 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 kernel which contains within itself the germ of the future plants. That's why not at least, not the least grain or kernel. I think the brother had looked that up in the, in the NIV. It said kernel, man. So not, not, not the least sperm of Jacob, of the elect of Jacob is gonna be, is gonna be uh, uh, sifted or destroyed, man. That's right. Go ahead. It says, uh, of the grain or kernel sown, metaphorically speaking, a seed, of a residue for a few survivors survivors reserved as the germ of the next generation. And that's the Israelite, that's the elect of Israel. Just that seed, so like it just that seed is stem from the harvest for the next soul. That's what's gonna come for the next for the kingdom to come. It says that's the, the harvest. The, the, the harvest is the world, the harvest is the end of the world, man. Where the where the angels are gonna come and they're gonna reap, man. See, a lot of you Christians and you niggas that know you Israelites, you, that's what you're waiting to see the angels pop up, but that's going to be too late for you then, man. That's right. Because right now, we're the angels right here speaking to you, man. We're the messengers, man. That's what the word angel means. It's a messenger, man. That's right. It says, uh, the semen of Pharaoh, or the product of semen, seed, children, and, offspring, and we're, and we're semen 
semen and prod the prodigy held that in a man in his nut set, man. Right. Family tribe plus, plus Family family tribe, man. The Israelites, man. The 12 tribes. The 12 families, man. The 12 patriarchs, man. That's right. Uh, let's see, uh, something so... That's it. Yeah. It says neither because uh, Romans 9 and 7, neither because they are the seed of Abraham. So you gotta go called. back, you gotta go back to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not Abraham, not Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. Right. Not Abraham, Isaac, and Midian. Not Abraham, Isaac, and Ishmael. But Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob. Okay. Uh, be uh, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are or the old children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And that seed is called an Isaac. Verse 8. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of the Most High, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. And who's the children of the promise? Verse 9. For this is the word of, the, of promise, that this time I will come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of the Most High according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. For it was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. There it is. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. And Edomites, you Edomites, you are the most hated of the Most High. The Most High don't like you, man. Right. You are hated, man, in the sight of Yahweh Bashi and Yahweh Shai. And you don't want to accept that. You don't want to believe that. But that's the truth. But yet, right. you running around the world with the Bible talking about God loves everybody, man. And these people really believe that, man. <laughs> these people want to sign it, believe in that shit, man. That's right. But then when you read the scriptures, it speak differently. And then that's when you get, people get confused, man. Because your fear of the Most High is taught by the precepts of men. It's not taught by the precepts of Yahweh Bashi and Yahweh Shai. Right. They got the Bible, but they lying to you, man. With it in their hand. This is the same man that swears on the Bible, you breaking the law. This is the same man that takes the Bible, casts it behind him, and, and speaks out of his own law, man. You breaking the law. That's right. Well, this is uh, Jeremiah 4 and 21. How long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sadist children. And they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. That's right, man. And, and the Lord has been, you know, sounding the trumpet, warning Israel, man, about what the, the, the upcoming perils, man. But Jake never listens, man. You see, and like the brother mentioned, when you're going to be willing to listen when, when it's too late, man, when the destructions are already happening, you know? And it says, what? That, that, the children of the Lord, so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians, you are foolish, man. Why? Because you don't you don't take heed to this word, but you take heed to the things of this fucking world, man. The, 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 the philosophies, the religions of this world, the brother was going into some of them, man. You know? You believe in, 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 in that your oppressor, the same race that's been oppressing and destroying you, and destroying the, the entire world, because it's not just us, but chiefly us they're oppressing you you believe that they're gonna come and deliver you man right. that they're the ones that that the edomite a so-called white man is gonna come out of the sky to to, to deliver you man ain't to save happen. the so-called negro latino native american race man ain't gonna happen. It, that that's um insanity man right. that's right it says they have not known me they are sadish children that word sadish going stupid. to what stupid man so the, the children of Israel, man, you believe in all these other religions, you're stupid, man. Because they don't they, they don't even logically make no fucking sense, man. Yeah, because just like a, all of these jakes that take that jab, all these jakes that, that took the jab, if you ask them if they believe in God, they'll say yeah. That's right. But you take the jab. That's right. You can't have both. That's right. Because if you take the jab, it's sure that you trust in this white man and his science. Jab, jab, according to Esau, is supposed to represent saving your life. And the only one who will save your life 
to how am I should be outside. And, and, and you don't even have enough faith to say, you know what, I'm not going to take that shit. And I'm going to leave it to the Lord to, to, you know, give me another job, man. You know why? Because it takes faith to right. say, I'm not going to take that. That's right. No matter, no matter what happens. And, and, and you, Jakes, you don't have no faith, man. Have no faith. The, the only faith you have is in, in, in fucking Esau, man. And, right. and his wickedness, man. His so-called science and, and medicine. See? And that's the same thing that's going to happen when the chip comes around, man. Esau's going to completely block you out of society and you motherfuckers are going to do whatever it takes yeah. to so-called be able to, to enjoy this world, man. And that's why the Lord's going to destroy you. Because you are a, a bunch of simple and stupid people, man. You, you rather lose all your rights, your, your freedom, than, than, than to mm -hmm. say, you know what, fuck this place, man. We're going to follow after our power, man. That's right. You see, that's giving you the, the, the solution, the, the, the way of salvation, man. It says, um, and they have no understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. And that's right, man. Our people, you know, the, the, the brother was mentioning these, you know, drug dealer jakes, man. They're, they're wise to do evil, but to come to the Lord, to come to righteousness, they, they have no, no, no wisdom, man. You see? To them, it makes more sense to become a a, a, a fucking drug dealer, a drug lord, than, than, than to go out here and, and, and look for a job and, and, and be righteous and wait for Yahweh to bless you. You yeah, see? Yeah. This Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of the Most High. So that's why you have all these fakes out here, and, and, and all these people taking a death, taking a search. They don't have no faith. The reason why they don't have faith is because faith is a gift from the most high. And he didn't give it to you. And they don't you can say you have faith. You can say I believe in the Lord, but your actions will dictate whether or not you have faith. So when you're presented with that situation, circumstances, whether it's with your job or whatever, and they say, listen, you're either gonna take this or you're gonna lose your job. Well, you know what? I have faith in your how about you how shy. So I'm gonna just have to lose my job. Because the most high can kick you another one. You, know? you get a, a Hebrews 11 and 1 Bible to show up. That's right, man. And a lot of people are, are, are fucking, fucking uh, are faithless and hopeless. You know, because they, they don't believe that they can, you know, man. they don't have faith in themselves. They don't have faith no. in, in, in the Lord, especially our people, man. We, our people are, are fucking destroyed completely, man. They don't have, you know, no self-worth, nothing. If you don't you have know? faith, you can't have hope. And and, and and that's what the Lord gives us through the Spirit, man. You know, the, the Lord yeah. gives us, you know, uh, self-worth, man. Because He's letting you know that you are you are His His children, man. You are royalty, man. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and with that comes what? Understanding, or wisdom, and knowledge, man. And that's why, you know, you've got to read, you've got to apply, you know, the the, 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 the law, statutes, and commandments, the, the, the counsel that the Lord has given us, man. So that what? So that we grow as people, you know, here in this world and spiritually. You know, the, the, the people say, oh, wisdom is wisdom is knowledge, or absolute and knowledge is power. But no, applied knowledge is power. Because if you don't apply that knowledge, man, it's no good. You could say, hey, if, if, if I work out and do 20 pushups a day, I'm gonna be healthy, but then you don't do the fucking push-ups. The, the fuck, the, you're not putting that knowledge to you, so what the fuck might as well not know, right? Oh, oh I know that if I drink these green juices, you know, I, 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 my, my health is gonna become better, but you never make the, the, the green juices, man, you see? And that's what Jake, you know, Jake, Jake knows that there's a power, Jake knows that, that the most high is, is out there, but they don't seek him. But they say, oh, I believe him. But like you mentioned, you know, that, hey, you, faith is a, a verb that requires action, man. And the Lord requires you to do certain things in order for Him to be dealing with you, man. To, to give you, to give you blessings and to give you understanding of, of the things that are going on. Yeah. Well, ultimately, faith is a gift from the Most High, and if He don't give it to you, you don't have it. You can say you have it. This is the Book of Hebrews, chapter eleven. Starting at the top. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Don't, don't do all our people hope for for a better way of life, for 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 rest, you know, for for a righteous world. They do, man. They, we all looking for rest, man. Even the fucking heathens. 
You know, but then read that second part. Uh, Hebrews 11 verse 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen right for so, by it the elders obtained a good report that's right so the evidence of things not seen things and because we don't we don't or Jake at least Jake in the world because you don't see a, a, a preview of the kingdom then, then you just rather say you know what I don't believe that shit you know I'd rather be a nigga in the world I'm gonna do my thing I'm gonna be doing this life that's right, man. That's what's going to get you destroyed, man. Let the unfaithful die in their unfaithfulness, man. Because at the end of the day, you're going to do whatever it takes to, to live in this world, to, to, to enjoy this world, even though uh, it's, it's, it's going to shit. Your mentality is, you know what, fuck, you might as well make the best out of it, you know? You might as well, you know? I mean, faith, as we said, in the book of Ephesians, says faith is a gift from the Most High. If he didn't give you that faith, it's because he didn't want to give it to you. That's right. That's because right. it's not for you. He didn't, he didn't choose you. You know? To, to keep, to keep it simple. This is 2 Ezra chapter 15 and verse, verse 8. Look, this is a real quick one. This is uh, Ecclesiastic. is in the Apocrypha. Chapter 6 and verse and verse 22 it says for wisdom is according to her name and she is not manifested to many. You know, meaning that what? That the Lord is not gonna give this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding unto everybody, man. Because wisdom is a precious thing. It's the most valuable thing that there is, like you know, the the, uh, the book of Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and, and all throughout the scriptures. It, it tells you the value of wisdom, man. It says that what? That nothing that thou can desire can compare to her, man. That's how, how valuable this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is to the Heavenly Father, man. And He's not going to give it to just any random body, man. Yeah, it's, it's not for niggas. That's right. It is, you know, I think it's, when you say niggas, you're talking about so called Latino, Native American, and so called Black. What's in the Haitian, man? That's that, 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 that mindset. And it's just true for for a about God. Niggas is blinded, man. Man, you, you Jake's out here, you blinded, man. You don't you know about the truth, man. You blind to the truth. That's right. This is uh the book of uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 3. It says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Hamashiach, who is the image of the Most High, shall shine unto them. Yeah, right. So, two thirds of our people they're lost in this world, man. and they're right. blinded by the, 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 the God of this world, which is the Satan. They're right. blinded by his different philosophies. They blinded by the flesh, the lust of the flesh. They blinded by the devices of this world, the gifts that they offer, the gifts. You know, so they can't. They're not. They're not. This, this beautiful gospel. It's good news, because that's what the word gospel means, it's good news. It's not it's not good to a nigga. To a nigga, they'll say, hey, well, what, what's the use of being an Israelite? What, what's that? That's what Troy says, uh, yeah, what is that? The it's, like, it's like, you know, you take a look at the movie of the Avengers, these niggas be fighting a bunch of fucking criminals and, you know, always trying to so-called, you know, uh, save the world and shit. And here comes Thanos, which supposedly is the bad guy, telling them, like, look, I just want to restore peace to the world, and these now, niggas are fighting against them. They fight that, against that's them? fucking Jake, man. They they fighting against something that's righteous, yeah. that that everybody needs, man. Yeah, like that whole that whole when they when they when, uh, Iron Man snapped his hand and brought everybody back. That's nothing more than a Renaissance period. Yeah, right. Man, Thanos, Thanos, the real Jake, the real all powerful guy. He's bringing, he's giving you, uh, uh, he's bringing his power and his his uh, understanding, you know, and and he. Uh, and, you niggas don't want that, man. You want you want to live in a world where Batman and the wicked are constantly moving. Right? You don't want the culling to happen. You don't want the because uh, that's what there was. That whole fifty percent of the people dropping dead was a, a culling, man. In the super elite, that's what they want. That's why they gave you the juice, man, to give you to to to, to, to create a man-made culling, man. But the Lord's gonna bring the culling anyway. Right. But you 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 Jake didn't see the advantage in that. He, he, Thanos, look, Thanos didn't just wake up one day and say, you know what? Just destroy the world, man. Simple as shit. Niggas are simple, man. 
Yeah, and that's why a nigga, hold on, a nigga can run up, run up behind you, rob him and smack the shit out you, then you wonder why it happened. You ain't fucking looking, man. You one time. You undisciplined, man. That's why you niggas gotta go, man. That's right. Fucking niggas, man. You niggas and you niggas, man. You gotta fucking go, man. That's right. You niggas are, you niggas are just useless, man. That's why two thirds gotta go, man. That's right. Uh, John 3 and verse 19 and this is the condemnation that the light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than and light. And you niggas love darkness man this is the philosophy because the way this world is nothing but dark. This world is completely dark man. You talk about black people man. You niggas really are black man walking around like with your eyes closed man yeah black in the mind Uh, and men love darkness rather yeah, than and light. And men love darkness rather than light. The truth. Because, and the truth is the light. Because the deeds were the evil. The truth is the light. Why? Because their deeds are evil. When you realize that, when you come to this world, it's is light, the light of this truth, you realize that the way that you is evil is dark in the, in, the, in the eyes of the how about smell the shot. You realize that, shit, man, I thought I was doing the right thing the whole time. The whole time was going up, man. And, and men don't want to come to this light because if they do come to this light, what's going to happen is going to show that what they're doing is wrong. And they don't like that. They don't want to. They don't want to be. They don't want the lights because they're like roaches, man. They roll around in this field, and when the lights come on, they scatter, man, because they're scared of the light. They're scared of you seeing them for what they truly are. Man. That's right. Yeah, because ultimately that's what this truth is all about. Jake likes to do whatever he wants to do, but this truth serving your how about me how shy. Is, is realizing that you can't do what you want to do. You cannot do what you, you want to do. do, what you, want to do. you can't eat what you want to eat. You can't wear what that's you right. want to wear. You can't do what you want to do. But that's the that's the mindset of this world. Do it without will, man. Jake lose all of his penis just because he don't eat pork and crab and shrimp a lot for his whole life. And he, he's still eating it, man. But there's a benefit to being handicapped in this society. So Jake will just, it, it happened with that. Uh, verse 20 says, For everyone that doeth evil hated the light. For everyone that doeth evil, they hate the light, they hate the truth. Because that evil, that evil that they're doing, uh, the, the light, the truth of the light is shining on that evil that they're doing. Right. Now they can't. Now I was going to say, we can't do what we want to do. No? That's why we have this truth. We, we, we have to do what you have our Shabbat Shai tells us to do, according to the scriptures. We used to do what we want to do, but now we can't do what we want to do. You can't. You know, your life ain't yours. It ain't yours. It was never yours. That's right. That's right. You got to do what's commanded of you. That's right. And Jake, two thirds of Jake, they don't want to do that. They got demons in them. He's a brother of feet bugging out, and he walked over the tub. He didn't nigga be acting tough, man, until you get pummeled to the fucking ground by the spirit, man, and then it'd be over. You, you get to them jail cells, you get to that lockup, man, and it's just you and that person in the cell, man. And that person get the best of you that you was flexing on, man. Yeah, I was watching Yeah, yeah I see watching, that nigga. He's bugging out. He's bugging out. He's just yeah. having his hand to the wall. And he, and he walked him out. Come, come. Like, listen, bro. You keep walking. Do what the devil told you. Keep walking up the block, bro. This ain't for you, man. My brother said, the reason you get hit with this sign, bro. That's it, man. And we're going to be in a right. We're going to be in a 100% right, man. When it's all said and done. But we know how to ignore you niggas, man. All that, all that, all that tough talk, all that, all that mean mug shit, that shit don't work against us through the spirit of how about you not A nigga in the world might get scared of that shit, not us, man. We just gonna watch you, and as soon as you touch one of us, man, that's it. We're gonna fall on your head. That's it. It's just gonna fall on you, bruh. Hey, three is better against, it's, it's better than one, man. Two is better than one, man. That shit, I'm gonna get mine. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Why do you have my shit outside? And we're gonna be we're gonna be 100 percent justified, man. But we're not out here for that. We're not out here for that. We are here to edify, man. That's right. That's right. Uh, back in John 3 and 20, it says, and uh, for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Yeah, everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Uh, neither coming to the light, lest the deeds should be reproved. Right, and we see that we saw we saw what is this? It's like uh like, uh, we saw the error of our ways, man. And we were willing to, to be shown the error of our ways, man. We understood that the way we were living was contrary to Yahweh Bajan al and what he established for us, man. So we repented of those ways, man. But two-thirds of our people, they don't want that. 
you know, a nigga that's a Robin Spiller nigga, he just want to stay a Robin Spiller nigga because he can get rewarded for that in this world. But in the truth, you ain't going to be rewarded. You're going to be rewarded, all right, with judgment, with wrath. That's uh, what that scripture says. Uh, I will turn. I will turn my face until they acknowledge my offense. So acknowledge their offenses. Exactly. Why that? Until they acknowledge their offense, man. Because when you acknowledge your your offense, the heavenly Father is going to start dealing with you, man. He's going to, you know, turn turn his face towards you and, and give you, you know, that that the, the gift of faith, you know, wisdom and understanding, so that you can overcome the the world, man, and, and all the the trials and tribulations that are going to come your way. <laughs> we um real quick, you know, we have to acknowledge the error of our ways every day. We get reproved, you know, we rebuke, rebuke, reprove. We always have to do more. That's right. Like I, I'm learning, I gotta do more. You gotta do more. You always gotta oh, do more. We can never do enough, man. And enough. the scriptures even say that, man. You can you know? never praise your high boss and your high child enough, man. And you should always feel like, look, man, I'm not doing enough. Man. Not doing enough. I can always do more. Mm -hmm. But niggas in the world don't think like that, man. They do the bare minimum and, hope and, 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 and request the, the greatest reward, man. Back in John 3 and verse 24, everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest it deeds should be approved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that's that right. they are brought in the most high. So what we're doing, the deeds that we're doing, these are brought in the most high. And in the end, they're going to be made manifest. Well, what are we part of the elect? And we're saved, man. We did our job, man. We did what we, what we was commanded of, man. And this is this is our reasonable service, man. That's why in the end, it's going to, we're going to say, look, we, I'm an unprofitable servant, man. I'm just doing what I'm commanded to do, man. But yet, you're how about you outside going to have mercy on us, man? Lord will. We're praying for that mercy, man, because we need it. You see Jake was all bugged out in their minds, man. Bugged out. He, he, that demon was angry because we was out here with the truth. And we was out here break dancing, spinning on our heads and shit, entertaining people. That motherfucking demon went and came from across the street and walked by us, trying to and walk around the corner. You see how fast the nigga was walking? Because some angels was around us, man. Escorting his ass out of here. Escorting that nigga. It's a destruction, man. Hey, get your ass to the block. We didn't have to say nothing, man. Because I'm telling you, I was watching them from when he was across the street. Yeah. And I just, I knew in my mind, once he threw the pan down, yeah, yeah. he was making a strength direction yeah, over there. Right. And I'm thinking to myself, well, if he come over here, he's going to get it. Yeah, he's going to get it, man. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. going to get rebuke. He's going to ask you, what demon or what's your name, demon? Yeah. And if you put your hands on one of us, he man, the, the, the spirit of your house, your outside is going to descend upon you, man. And it ain't going to be for your good. Right, right. right. the fuck down the block, man. Right. Ain't seen him right. since, man. He ain't going to walk fast, too, wasn't he? I thought he was going to stop, man. But hey, man, it's not for you. Go up the block, man. That's cool. Because all we do is come out here to edify with the host of the But like the brother said, we don't want to get violent. If that road come, there's no shit's going to happen, man. It's not going to be good. That's what it is. We ain't choir boys up here, man. Nope. See, if Joe Osteen or T.D. Jax is out here, that nigga wouldn't say shit. Oh, we're going to fuck with you. Yeah, hell yeah, man. If, like, if they said, if they, if they, if they said on, on, on Sunday, YPP, Kalakawa Avenue at a certain time, T.D. Jakes and Joe Osteen and the lights are going to be out here, not on the stage, just on the corner where the cameras and they're going to be preaching. Like the brother said, this should have been packed, man. And they wouldn't use the Bible. They wouldn't, they wouldn't, no Bible. Bible. They, they wouldn't need no Bible. They no. wouldn't use no words of the Lord. Sure. They would just show up. Show up. Like when Michael Jackson used to come up out of the stage, he used to stand there like this. Say he didn't say shit. People just walk <laughs> out. Ah! Like the nigga was just singing. And the nigga wasn't doing nothing but standing there. Okay. With that fucking jerry curl in his head, man. And then couldn't get enough of that damn jerry curl, man. It burnt on fire, he did jerry curl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that Pepsi Cola commercial back in the day, man. Okay. And the nigga kept rocking that jerry curl, that JC, man. But he was up there. But people like that because they like to be entertained. They want them soft words, them smooth words, man. They don't want to be free. Yeah, niggas don't want to be free. Niggas like, they get that scripture, they trust in oppression. And you don't want to be free, but the truth said, the scripture, Yahweh Shai said, the truth shall make you free, man. Right. We're in captivity. Even when I said that to that little woman, she got offended. Well, I ain't in captivity. Yeah, yeah. I'm free. All right. All right. That's what he's like. You in captivity to this day. To this day. That's right. 
Hey. You're in captivity. And you don't want to recognize it, man. Now that's the best slave, the nigga that think he's free. Here it is, these other nations are living a million times better than you, man. And you think that you're free, man. They think they free, but you really, these niggas is paycheck to paycheck, project to project, man. And you think you're free, man. You ain't free. You in you slavery, man. She ain't got no head. She ain't had no man with her, man. What was a man at? What, he in a hotel room sleep? She ain't got no fucking man. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 62 and verse 10. Trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. And that's what Jake is. Jake, they trust in oppression and they become vain in yeah. robbery. It's stealing. Kill him. That wasn't a scripture, but that's big too. It says, if riches increase, set not your heart upon them. And that's what they do in this world. That's what Esau is definitely doing that. He set his heart upon his riches like he can't get, he can't be broke. They've been winning from generation to generation, so they're like, man, it ain't gonna take no six months for me to lose it, but it's gonna take one hour for you to lose all of that shit, man. All of that, man. Your, your rank, your, your, your prosperity, Everything. your place in this world is gonna be gone in one hour, man. And you ain't gonna have no money to pay us off. You ain't got enough money, you ain't got enough gold, silver, nothing to pay us off, man. We want, we want that power of flesh, man. We gonna get it. Right. Out of you. We're going to get your cocktail fruit. We're going to get it. Get that right. cocktail fruit, man. Yeah, that scripture I'm asking for is, uh, uh, it's an Isaiah, man. They trust in the Isaiah person. 30, verse 12. What's here? I was looking for that scripture that says, uh, they have been, uh, saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word. Yeah, you Jakes, you Jakes despise this word, man. You don't want to hear this word. You don't want to be directed. You don't want to burst. You don't want to idol. You, you just want to idolize. You don't want to be, be mad, nigga. You want to socialize. And that's what you niggas want to do, man. Niggas, you 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 don't, you don't want to hear the truth. You don't want to hear the wretched. You don't want to hear the word of Yahweh Shem Shai. You despise it. But yet. Like we said, T.D. Jakes is one of them niggas talk, you niggas believe it, man. You don't listen to that shit. You don't listen to that shit to your eyes turn uh, 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 boot, man. Yeah. He ain't supposed to be riding on the street. I don't know. That nigga was like, Yeah, but if that was a nigga, he would have been shot. He would have been killed, man. <laughs> that was a nigga or a spigot. He pulled up. He would have been kicked off that bike, man. Throw it out on him. That is straight up, man. <laughs> Any on his phone? Citizens and rights and shit. Yeah, all that shit, yeah. <laughs> this is our prophet Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 12. Wherefore thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word. Yeah, you despise this word. And trust in oppression. And you trust in oppression. You trust in this world, you trust in oppression. I don't give a damn how high in society you are. You trust in this world, you are trusting in oppression, man. Because you are being oppressed, man. Don't you know that as rich as Oprah Winfrey is, the lowest eater might can walk up to her and call her a nigga. And she gotta take it. No amount, no amount of money is gonna be worth more than that eater might say nigga to Oprah Winfrey, man. As much money as Jay-Z got, much influence and power this nigga think he, he ain't got no power. But as much influence this nigga got, he walked into the most eater might establishment, man, and they will kick his big, this tall, dreadlock, wearing black ass out of there, man. He gotta go take his money to another establishment, man. Because these Edomites, they don't want your money. They don't care about your fucking money. They don't care about your, your influence, nigga. They don't like you, nigga. Can you get that thing a crazy head? She always get a nigga wake up every other year. Especially when she go to her man. She go to her man, though. Yeah, that was her man that kicked that bitch out, man. Not just one, but it was that sword, man, and York, man, because they don't know that black ass in York. And up with them, when she ain't got them Crayola, them Crayola people working on her, her body, she look like a straight up nigga woman, bruh. 
a straight up nigga demon. Nigga man. A, a ugly ass stink <laughs> motherfucking nigga. <laughs> she ain't walking up, she ain't walk up in her mess with a with a with a do on and a thousand dollar outfits, man. She walk up in, in some slides, hot to the car, with a white shirt on some sweats. I'm trying to dress down, I'm trying to dress down. And they was like, no, nah, bitch, this is you, you can't afford nothing in here. Even if you can't afford it here, you can't afford it in here, man. Same for you. This ain't for you, bitch. This is what they, told they don't make they don't make Hermes for niggas, man. They think that they can roll up like Esau do with them beat down yes. folks. New balance yeah, yeah, yeah. to a store to yeah. buy like a bunch of shit. That ain't how it works. They choose you walk up in that bitch, the in the bitch that work at the counter, make way less than Oprah Winfrey ever did. And she still look down on that bitch. I still don't like that nigga. Because they tell her in the back. This stuff right here that we making, that's why they don't have price tags on that shit. Because it's not for the average person, man. Louis Vuitton, the reason why all you average people like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Fendi, and Prada, is because niggas jump on it in a rap game and start talking about it. But when you go up in there, that shit is not made for, they make clothes, they make fun of you, man. They make clothing that look like symbols and all that other big lip crazy shit, man. But a goop, a goop, a first generation goop. Go and leave out that bitch with a hand full of bags. They trying to be like Esau, man. Yeah. Right. Hey, this place is like, see in America, y'all can get away with that shit. When you go to Europe, man, they don't play that shit. You niggas ain't up in there. You niggas are not up in up in the real shit. They don't want your money. They don't want your money. They don't. They don't, they don't want your service. Don't they don't want none of that shit. Yeah. You go to go to Monaco. Go to Monaco and see how many niggas you see, you see up in, in, a, in, a, in these highest scores in Monaco, man. Not one. They don't even work here. And all the money he got ain't enough, man. Why didn't the store just let Oprah buy a $38,000 handbag. This is from 2013. <laughs> it says, why get in the store, just let Oprah buy a $38,000 handbag? On a list of things to be outraged about at the moment, I'll admit this isn't the top. It's not, even her getting disrespected, it ain't the top. Nobody cares about you niggas. The Swiss tourism office apologized to Oprah on Friday because she wasn't allowed to buy a $38,000 handbag while recently shopping in Switzerland. Poor little Oprah said the fact, sad things. It does make me wonder though, can you ever be rich enough or famous enough or beautiful enough not to be racially profiled while shopping? The answer to that is no! Yeah. No! Hail to the no. Fuck no! Nope to the hell. First, here's what happens. According to Oprah, she went into a fancy store and took entourage and without her famously long fake eyelashes and asked to see a handbag that was secured behind a screen. The saleswoman said, nope, it's too expensive. Look at these bags instead. <laughs> the O asked to see the bag again. It was from Tom Ford's Croc skin. I want to touch it, that too. But the saleswoman again stared at the media mogul who is reportedly worth $3 billion to other bags and what she imagined would be Oprah's price range. Right? Wow. O asked to see the bag a third time. But the saleswoman said, bitch, can't you take a hit? No. <laughs> Who's apparently trying to protect Oprah from being emotionally crushed by the price said she said didn't want to hurt old feeling and refused again. Oprah and her three billion dollars left the store without buying anything, man. See? It ain't just worth billions, bro. Fucking billions, bro. Can you imagine being worth three billion dollars and these dirt bag employer that work for somebody tell you this ain't in your price range? You got three billion. She probably make money in her sleep. But yet it wasn't enough. You know why it wasn't enough? Because you're just a nigga. You are just a nigga in this world, man. And she was in the whitest of countries, Switzerland, bro. They're fucking be showing me pictures of Switzerland all the time. I don't even want to go there, motherfucker, bro. Because I know it's going to hurt my feelings emotionally, bro. Uh, they don't want me there. And you got to take that dab, bro. Eddie and everything. They ain't even using money. They taking a chip. 
they got the Caragua. They got the Caragua over here, bro. So they don't even want your money. That bitch told the Oprah could have just said, you know what? Give me this whole fucking show, nigga. Give me the whole show. And it still wouldn't have made that Edomite any more uh, that much endearing to of her, man. She could have brought the whole fucking store out, bro. That's why I said, like, it, it happens now. Go into one of these high and luxury stores. They're not going to come walk to you and help you. Can we help you with anything? Can we take you to, did you not know that all these high-end stores have a back room, bro? They got a back room with exclusive shit in there. You ain't going in there if you a nigga. I you to put security at, uh, what's the jerk? Tiffany. Right yeah. down the street, I put security there. When you come through that door, they got all expensive stuff, if you can see. But if you got real money, yeah. they have two security men, one of which I used to be there, take you in the back with six, six, six figures and up. They take you back and they close the door, they lock it, they lock it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Bring out the champagne and all that shit. All that shit. Would you like something to drink? Blah, blah, blah. And they say, okay, this is what we got. What we got, man. What we got. And they got that shit all in these stores. Yeah, yeah. All these high end stores, bro. This girl is from Ferragamo. The Hermes. Hermes. He's taking a ride. All that Gucci, Louis, Fendi, Prada. All that shit, man. And if your woman got money, they gonna call before you get there. You know, they're gonna call you. They're gonna call you. Hey, excuse me. Like this one dude, I used to follow him on uh, on YouTube named Manny for and shit like that. This nigga is a real estate mogul. He, and he got he owned a high, bunch of high-end cars, particularly Bugattis, man. Did you know a Bugatti is a million and plus? Well, Hermes called this nigga when he got his new Bugatti and said, look, before you get your Bugatti, we would like to make the inside of your car all Hermes, man. He called him up. They took his car from the uh from the shop where he built that, they took that shit to Italy, man, made the whole thing Hermes, put three Hermes bags inside the car, man. Niggas don't do that. This, this, he's, he's an Iranian, man. This nigga got bread, bruh, to the point where they call him. And it ain't that he got money. It's because who he is. It's not be, if he was a nigga, they wouldn't call him. They didn't call you niggas. Because they know that you niggas will be rich for the moment and broke the next. What Oprah Winfrey got, if the, if the Rothschilds woke up with $3 billion in their bank account, they would lose their fucking mind, man. They kill the whole world, bruh. But see, a billion dollars is something to you niggas. Oh, I own a paint. I got some assets. I got this. You niggas get all excited and random dazzled by that shit. But the Edomites don't. Why? Because they got Edomite supremacy, man. Edomite supremacy is what rules the world, man. That's why, like, in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to be wealthy, but we ain't going to worry about fucking money. The Israelites, we're going to be, we're going to have Israelite supremacy. Everything is ours. We don't worry about that shit. For real. Fuck it. We only worry about it when you're trying to get through the day. Bro, you broke, but hey, we rich and paid, man. I get my job on fucking payday every day, Jake. Every time on payday, this nigga, pay about three, four times through the night, this nigga. Man, it's payday. Man, it's payday. Man, nigga, it's gonna be broke tomorrow, nigga. You get the million dollars. Exactly, but that's enough for a nigga. Payday is enough for a nigga, man. Sometimes, I'll be honest with you, I don't even even on my mind if it's another day to go to fucking work. Go home and be tired. Yeah. Working for the next one. Yeah. Working for the next two. Yeah, right. Which is which is which is which is which is unlawful too. That's right. The riches we want is in that is in the scripture. You supposed to pay a man when the sun go down, man. Yeah. That day. That day. And Jake's supposed to have enough discipline to save his or her money throughout mm -hmm. the week, man. So you can pay your bills for the month. That's right. That's right. But niggas ain't got it. Oh, nigga, I can't get paid every day. I be broke. Nah, nigga. <laughs> Fuck that. For real, bro. Yeah. These niggas are simple, man. Fake ass money. <laughs> and, it, and it ain't even real money. Like the fuck said, fake money. ass money, man. It's debt notes, man. Yeah, yeah. What's up, brother? Hey, so with that, I can We hope camp was edifying. Again, all great sound and glory go to. Yeah, Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai by Shem Kakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. And peace and temptation to you, Akim Ali Fushi, and defending this gospel for the four corners of the earth. As well as you believe us in Yahweh by Shemel Shah, the man as well as the woman. Hey, shalom to next time. Shalom. Shalom to you. Shalom to you.